All right, so in this problem, I have two to the power of 20 minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. So I'm gonna first start by rewriting 20 as 19 plus one. So now I have two to the power of 19 plus one minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, I have two to the power of 19 plus one, and this is gonna equal two to the power of 19 times two to the power of one. And I have this minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now from here, if I factor out two to the power of 19 from my left-hand side, I get two to the power of 19 times two to the power of one minus one is equal to 16 to the power of x. And two to the power of one minus one, that's simply equal to one. And anything times one is itself. So I have two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, 16, that's the same thing as two to the power of four. So now I have two to the power of 19 is equal to two to the power of four to the power of x. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So two to the power of four to the power of x, that's gonna equal two to the power of four times x, which is also two to the power of four x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 19 is equal to 4x. Now we have a simple equation here. All I have to do is divide both sides by four and I get x is equal to 19 over four. Now to check, my original equation was two to the power of 20 minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, two to the power of 20 minus two to the power of 19, we already know that's two to the power of 19. So we get two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of 19 over four. Now 16, that's the same thing as two to the power of four. So now I have two to the power of four to the power of 19 over four. And these two fours cancel out. So I get two to the power of 19 is equal to two to the power of 19. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of 12 minus one is equal to zero. So to solve this, I'm gonna first rewrite this as x to the power of six to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into x to the power of six plus one times x to the power of six minus one is equal to zero. So this gives me two equations. I get x to the power of six plus one equals zero and x to the power of six minus one equals zero. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again I'm gonna rewrite x to the power of six minus one equals zero as x to the power of three to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. <clears throat> so I can use this property again and get x to the power of three plus one times x to the power of three minus one is equal to zero. Now for x to the power of three minus one equals zero, I can, I'm gonna rewrite this as x to the power of three minus one to the power of three equals zero. So I can use the property a to the power of three minus b to the power of three is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So this turns into a minus b times a squared plus a plus one is equal to zero. Sorry, this turns into x minus one times x squared plus x plus one is equal to zero, which gives me yet another two equations. So now I have x minus one equals zero and x squared plus x plus one equals zero. 
So for x minus 1 equals 0, all I have to do is add 1 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 1. And for x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0, I can use the quadratic formula. So by using it, I get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3i over 2. So these are two more solutions. And now we aren't done yet because we also have to solve these. So now I have x to the power of 3 plus 1 is equal to 0. And I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. So I get x to the power of 3 is equal to negative 1, meaning x is also equal to negative 1. So this is another solution. Now for x to the power of 6 plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to again subtract 1 on both sides. So I get x to the power of 6 is equal to negative 1. And if I take the 6th root, I get x is equal to 6 root of negative 1, which is equal to negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6. So now, the sixth root of negative 1 is, say, the, we know that i is equal to the square root of negative 1, which is equal to negative 1 to the power of 1 half. So, negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6 is the same thing as negative 1 to the power of 1 half minus something. So now 1 over 6, or I should say 1 half minus 1 over 6, is equal to 1 over 3. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 is equal to 1 half. We know this. Meaning we have negative 1 to the power of 1 over 6 and this plus or sorry, I should, 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 is what we can rewrite 1 over 6 as. Now, this is the same thing as 1 half plus negative 1 over 3. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So this is going to equal negative 1 to the power of 1 half times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 to the power of 1 half is the square root of negative 1, which is equal to i. So we get i times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3, which is the same thing as 1 over negative 1 to the power of 1 over 3, which is equal to negative 1. So I get i times negative 1, which is equal to negative i, which is my final solution.